got a Maytag French door refrigerator with defrost problems for you today. Um, we're going to get into here and figure out what's working and what is not. Uh, as you can see, all that ice there. And the first thing we're going to do, well, after we take it all apart, I don't have that shown here for you. But to put in the force defrost, you want to close the left hand door and hold the right hand door switch like I'm doing now. Then hit refrigerator down three times and then let go of the light switch. Then you'll see FD, which is force defrost. You want to hit it refrigerator down once again. That enters you into the force defrost. Then you'll hit refrigerator up, which will change it to a long defrost. And then you'll hit refrigerator down again, and that will enter it into defrost. And now you can check power down below to make sure you got power. Uh, if you got power and your heating element's good, and your bimetal's good, you should be getting heat. And we actually are getting heat out of this unit. Um, <clears throat> you can hear it sizzle or you can um, notice the, the heat and everything getting down there. But what we notice on these is this control board, which is they call the jazz board, it doesn't work properly. The timing in this thing, it just doesn't work. So if you can go into diagnostics get this thing on force defrost and it'll work you need to change that to your jazz board if you can get it in the force defrost and it's not working you'll have to check out your element and it should be around 30 ohms or so and then uh, well you can check your bimetal too that could be open and yeah that's that's pretty much it you got the board you got the bimetal and the heating element um, like I said before if on this particular unit one pretty much exactly like this if it is working using diagnostics you need to change the board there's no point in changing the biometal if it's working and there's no point in changing the element if it's working it's all in the logic which is in the control anyways uh, we're going to get into replacing this control board. All right, to rewind a little bit, we got to get into this control panel area. And what you need is a flathead screwdriver. Um, those holes, well, you won't be able to see it on this one. But you want to push to the front of the unit to disengage those clips. This will be a better look for you. Um, there's one on the left, one on the right but you just push them towards the front and it should, and you'll have to give it some good force too. Um, but once you get those clips out, you can actually get into this board and get it changed. Um, so you got those harnesses, you got some clips just holding this in and no screws, I don't think. Yeah, no screws and yeah, you just get that old board out. This new board, um, you see how it's not broke apart like the other one is? So we got to break this thing apart. So I'm just going to let you guys um, watch how I do this. And then we're going to put the board in. And then after we get it in, we're going to program it. Um, but I'm going to let you guys watch this a little bit. And I'll chime back in here in a bit.
All right, board is in. Uh, so now we're gonna plug this thing in and we're gonna program it. When you plug it in, you'll see zero, zero. And what we need to do is we need to get into the programming sequence and put in the number that's on the data plate. And some of these boards come with instructions on how to get into the programming sequence, but it's the opposite of putting it in the force defrost. You close the right hand door, hold the left hand switch, and you press freezer down three times, and then let go of the left hand door switch and to hit freezer down again. Um, then you can change the numbers on here. Um, the data plate will tell you what number it needs to be. It'll say code and then with two numbers right next to it. In this case, it is 12. Uh, once you put in the one, two, then you'll hold freezer down for, I think, three seconds. You'll start seeing them blink. And then once they blink, you know it's programmed correctly. You can shut the doors and then open the doors and you'll see four, four, and then you know it's programmed correctly. Um, but after you get her programmed, there's one of two things that you'll be doing. And if you're a technician, you're going to be getting out your steamer and you're going to be defrosting this unit. Or if you're a customer or just a regular guy, I recommend leaving it unplugged for 24 hours or so, letting all of that ice on your evaporator melt. That's the easiest way to do it. But me, I'm a technician. I'm going to get these customers running. So I got my steamer and we're going to get rid of all this ice. And once we get rid of all this ice, this thing is going to work like a charm for these guys. So if you need this refrigerator today to frost it like I'm doing, don't use a heat gun. Don't use a heat gun. You'll do more damage than, you know, getting this thing fixed quicker. <laughs> use a steamer or shoot spray some water on it <laughs> don't if you melt the liner i mean you're just going to cause more problems than what you're saving um so if ever in doubt just leave this thing unplugged but if you need it asap use a steamer um you won't hurt anything it won't melt any plastic like a heat gun or a hair dryer would um but i'm just gonna let you guys watch the rest of this um, that's how you diagno diagnose a defrost issue on this particular model with the jazz board. Um, so I don't have video of me taking this thing apart. Um, but the good information is the information I have in this video. Um, I'm sure there's videos out there that will help you be able to take this freezer apart. But the important part is figuring out what's wrong with the thing. Um, but anyways, that's it. If you guys need the part, I'll have it down in the description below. Um, I appreciate y'all watching and I really hope this helps. If you guys have any questions, you know, just leave a comment. I'll see what I can do to help. Thanks for watching.